welcome friends and welcome to my series of video lectures on theory of structures in today's video lecture we are going to solve a numerical problem on method of joints friends we are studying the topic of simple trusses in relation to the course outcome f evaluate axial forces in members of simple trusses in today's video lecture number 5 we are going to consider a practical numerical problem on calculation of member forces by method of joints we have seen already that there are two methods analytical methods one is method of joints and the other is method of sections so we are going to take a numerical example on method of joints in this lecture so the problem is like this calculate member forces in given frame this is the given frame now we will start solving the problem step by step so step 1 is calculation of support reactions we have seen in earlier video lecture that this step of calculation of support reactions is necessary for simply supported frames only for cantilever type of frames this step is not required so in this case this frame is simply supported you can see support at a and support at c hinge support at a and roller support at c so this is a simply supported frame so step 1 will be calculation of support reactions in our earlier video we have taken this complete problem of calculation of support reactions we have seen that there are three reactions rax ray and rc and we have calculated them as shown here so now that first step is over we move to the second step so the second step is method of joints for member forces so we have to understand this method right from the beginning our target of this problem is that we want to calculate the forces in every member of this frame in the structural behavior of a frame we have seen that every member of the frame is subjected to axial tension or axial compression force now in this problem we have to actually find out that value of that force by method of joints so you can see there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 members so finally we will get this type of table as the final answer of the problem and in this table we are having member ab bc ad this ab bc ad de ec bd and be this is the list of seven members we will be putting the numerical values we get from the calculations and finally we will be writing whether it is in tension or compression so target is to fill this table now we will go for method of joints let us understand the basic concept of method of joints what we are doing in this method is we are selecting one joint and drawing its free body diagram that means we are showing all the forces developed at that joint for example if you look at joint a at joint a we can see that there is one ra x force another ra y force these are reaction forces then when we will isolate or separate out this joint a this ad and ab these two members will get cut once they get cut we know that there is a force in every member so those forces will come out and they will act on joint at a so at joint a there will be 1 2 3 and 4 forces so this will be about joint a out of these four forces two forces are already known this 10 kN this 2.5 kN two forces will be unknown this is ab force and this is ad force so we have to start solving this problem with a joint at which there are only two unknown forces this is the first rule of the method every joint if you look if you look at joint d if you cut this joint d separate out joint d you will get this force second third force and third force so you will get three forces at this joint d and all the three forces will be unknown forces you don't know their values if you start at e 
you will get one known force but three unknown forces. If you look at C, you are getting one unknown force, second unknown force and third unknown force. So, you can take C or you can take A as the starting joint. So, you have to understand this rule very clearly. Otherwise, you will lost in a problem later on. So, select a joint at which there are maximum two unknown forces. So, we will select joint A to start with. So, step two, method of joints, we will consider joint A. Now, we will draw the diagram of joint A. Look here. This is joint A. What are the forces acting at joint A? There are first force is the reaction force. This is 2.5 kN. The second force is the again the reaction force. This is 10 kN. The third force is like this. And the fourth force is like this. These two forces are not known forces. They are unknown forces. We will label them as F means force along AB. Along AB. This is A, this is B. So force along AB and this is force along AD. F, AD. Now the only thing is remaining that is showing the arrow tips of FAB and FAD. We do not know whether the arrow tip is towards right or towards left. So we will have to assume some direction. Now as a simple rule, we will always assume the directions outwards. We don't know whether they are correct or not. But we will have to start with assumption and then correct if required. So let us keep a habit of always resuming the outward directions. So this has become our free body diagram of joint A. This we will call as FBD, free body diagram of joint A. Now, next step is we have to apply the conditions of equilibrium to this joint. The logic behind this method of joints is that since the entire frame is stationary or entire frame is in equilibrium, every joint is also in equilibrium. So this joint A is subjected to four concurrent forces. So all these forces are keeping this joint in equilibrium. There are two unknown forces. So we will calculate them using the equilibrium equations. Now, before we solve the problem, we will require a small numerical detail. What is that? This angle we will require. In order to do the calculations, this angle is this angle. We will call this angle as theta. So this angle is also theta. Now how can we calculate this angle theta? We can calculate it from the geometry of the truss, given truss. The distances are given. So we will do a minor construction in order to calculate this angle, if we imagine a perpendicular here, then this total distance is 3 meters. So this distance will be 1.5 meters and we will take tan of theta. Tan of theta, this is the trigonometrical ratio, tan of an angle is opposite side upon adjacent side. You have to consider this triangle, right angle triangle. So it is opposite side is this D into this, perpend this perpendicular. So it will be, this distance is 1.5 meters. So it is 1.5 upon, this is opposite side upon the adjacent side. The adjacent side is, this is 1 point, sorry, the opposite side is 3 meters. And the adjacent side is 1.5 meters. So this will be 2. So tan theta is equal to 2. Therefore, this will give us theta equal to that angle you will get is 63.43 degrees. We will take this angle theta as 63.43 degrees. 
I hope you have understood this small numerical calculation of trigonometry. Now we will simply apply the conditions of equilibrium to this joint A. That's all. We know that this is a concurrent force system. The meaning of the word concurrent is that all forces are meeting at a single point. All forces are passing through a single point. In that case, we call it as a concurrent force system. And for concurrent force system, there are only two equations of equilibrium available. Sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fy equal to 0. Sigma m equal to 0, the third equation is not applicable for concurrent force system. So, we will apply equilibrium equation sigma fx equal to 0. Now, look at this frame and apply sigma fx equal to 0. We know that for sigma fx equal to 0, we treat all rightward forces as positive. So, look at all x direction forces. So, this one force is FAB, it is towards right. So, I will say this gives plus FAB. The value of FAB is not known. So, first force is FAB towards right. Second force is you can say 10 kN towards left, so it is minus 10. The third force is 2.5 kN, but it is perfectly in y direction. So there is no component in x direction for this 2.5 kN force, so it will not come in this equation. The fourth force FAD is neither in x direction nor in y direction. It is oblique or inclined. So that force will have two components in x and y direction. So we can break this force in x direction, one component in y direction, another component. In frames, we are always going to come across such inclined forces and we will have to consider x components and y components separately. In our applied mechanics, we have studied how to calculate the x and y components of an inclined force. So, the x component of this FAD force will be FAD cos theta. As a simple rule, I will tell you that the cos component of the force is the four component which is connected to the angle. So this is theta and this angle is connected to this x component. So it becomes cos component. Now the question is about its sign, plus or minus. The arrow tip is like this, away from the point. So the components will also have the arrow tips away from the point. So it is towards right and therefore it will become plus. So this is the part of sigma fx. This is equal to 0. So this is one equation that you get. Now you find that in this equation both the unknowns are in the same equation. So you cannot find out just by using this equation. You will have to take help of the second equation. So I will simply call this as equation 1 and leave the equation as it is. Now I will go for the other sigma fy equal to 0. In sigma fy equal to 0 I will show all the vertically upward forces as positive. Keep a habit of writing your sign convention here itself so that you are also clear and the examiner is also clear about what you are assuming. So let us apply conditions of equilibrium sigma fy equal to 0 to this. So look here again all the four forces look at 10 kN first force it is x direction force so no y component so this is of no use for sigma fy. Same is the case of FAB it is in x direction so no y component. 2.5 kN is entirely in y direction so it is as it is to be taken as it is and its direction is downwards so according to the convention it will become minus 2.5 now coming to this inclined force of FAD FAD is having inclination so it will have y component also so its y component will be taken as FAD into sine theta 
Why sin theta? Because you can say that this component is away from this angle. It is not connected to the angle in case of F like this. So it is away from the component. So you can call it as F AD sin theta. Now the arrow tip will be, since this arrow tip is away from the, uh, from the joint A, this arrow tip will also be away from the joint A. So this will be above or means upwards. So this will be treated as positive. So there are only two Y components for the, all these four forces and therefore their sum is equal to zero. Now if you look in this equation, there is only one unknown F AD sin theta equal to and this equal to zero. So F AD is the only unknown. So we can directly write down the value of F AD. We have to remember that this theta is already known. Its value is 63.43 degrees. Now I will suggest you one simple thing that don't write that 63.43 every time here. You just keep this in the memory of your calculator and while doing the calculation put that value of theta properly. That is also a good idea. Otherwise you may write every time 63.43 that is also uh, acceptable. Now if you do this calculation then you will get F AD equal to 2.81 kilonewton. 2.81 kilonewton. So this is the value of F AD. Now since this is a y direction force and its answer is positive, it means that its direction is like this. So this becomes one answer. Once you get this F AD equal to 2.81 kilonewton, then you need not write this direction here. F AD is its direction is correct. F AD is the direction is like this. So it is 2.81. It is plus means its assumed direction is correct. Now we will put this value of F AD in sigma fx equal to 0. If you put the value, so I will say therefore from equation 1 if we put the values this fab minus 10 fad you put the value fad and you will get fab equal to you will get the second value as 8.73 kilonewton. Eight point seventy three kilonewton. I am leaving to you the matter of calculation and substitution in the equation. This is a simple mathematical calculation. You will find here that both F A B is having plus answer, F A D is also having plus answer, F A D's direction, this is assumed direction. So since the assumed the answer is positive, the assumed direction is correct. And AB is also there. So assumed direction is this FAB is correct. That is the meaning of the plus sign. Now, after we have calculated this, we will make an immediate substitution here. We will not end with this step unless we do this. FAB, look at here. AB, this is force AB. The force, the membrane force AB is 8.73. So I will put it here. 8.73 kilonewton, force in kilonewton. So the second is FAB 2.81. Now, about the nature of the force, tension or compression. That we will little postpone till the next video, but we will make one change, one substitution here. That this is FAB. Look at AB. The arrow tip is of FAB is towards right, so we will write an arrow here. Okay, we will write an arrow here, which is the direction of this arrow, and we will write also the arrow for F. AB and AD both. AD's arrow, this is the arrow. 
this is also the arrow. Actually, we should write the numerical values here, but it is little, it will, this diagram will become little complicated. Otherwise, you would write 8.73 here. Or uh, let us write it, try to write it 8.73. Okay, this is AB and the other is 2.81 AD. These are the arrow tips. Now the last point to note here is once we have shown these two arrow tips, this is just a repetition of this diagram you can say. In this member, since this is from one side, automatically this becomes a force from this side and this becomes a force from this side. So every member is having these two arrows equal and opposite. So 8.73 and equal opposite. This arrow is calculated from this diagram. So automatically this arrow comes here and this arrow comes here. So this is the end of the analysis of joint A. And with analysis of joint A, we have calculated 8.73 and 2.81. And we will be writing the, the last point is whether it is tension or compression. If the arrow tips inside a member are towards each other, towards each other, then we call that it is tension. Okay. So the arrow tip shows that this is tension for AB. For these are also arrow tips towards each other. So this is also tension. So they are in tension. Both of them are in tension. So friends, we have started a numerical problem on method of joints. Because of the time restrictions, we have to continue the same problem in the next video. So let us meet in the next video. Goodbye till then.